friends! So in today's video, I just wanted to show y'all how I read my Bible because this was a huge struggle for me for so long. As y'all know, or if y'all don't know, I recently started my walk with Christ. Um, I decided to start in February but didn't like fully like go all in until like March, April. A little background, I didn't grow up in a church. I would go to church like whenever I was in high school, I went to church, but it was Wednesday like youth services. So I would just go to hang out with friends. So I never like learned anything. Fast forward to my adult life. At first I wasn't an atheist. Like I was like, okay, there's a God. I didn't know any kind of background. I didn't know why Jesus died. I didn't know really anything. And like October, December of 2022, that was like my huge like moment in life where I just wasn't a huge believer. Um, I don't know. I, I guess like social media and like the internet just kind of got to my head and I just wasn't believing. No one knew that except for my husband. Just things would make me mad and I know now that it was the enemy. It was the devil. Um, like I would see people with signs on the streets like, oh, Jesus loves you and that would make me so mad. I don't know why. Um, I just wasn't a huge fan i guess i don't know all that matters is that now i am fully all in i'm a christian i'm very happy best decision i've ever made so i wanted to help y'all because i know this was like a huge step and this was the best decision i've ever made i'm a newbie so i started february march april ish and it's july so i'm a newbie but still i'm like all in i'm on fire and i hope this helps y'all come out of like the lukewarmness or just completely atheist you know just I hope this video helps y'all so for starters you'll need a bible this is my bible it's the beautiful word bible it's the new international version I have a bunch of different versions so, so I bought this little pocket bible this is the NLT version. I love this version as well. My very first Bible was given to me whenever we got married. So it was given to me and I kind of just like put it in the storage. Um, it was this definitely used Bible. Um, and this one is really good. This is a good starter Bible. So if y'all are looking for a starter Bible, this is this is so good. This is called the Life Essentials Interactive Study Bible. It's the Christian Standard Version. I'll put a link in the description. I did find this version on Amazon. So this Bible is super good. Um, I just have a bunch of tabs here. In the beginning section, it has a bunch of like categories. Like if you're struggling with marriage, love, sin, if you want to learn more about sin, security, scripture, teaching, tears, temptation, you know, all these categories. It's just so good. So I have like all these tabs here. So this Bible is so good and I love it. Okay, stay. Okay, this Bible is so good. I love it so much. Um, simply because, okay, I just opened a random book. So it has the Bible here. And then under it, it has like a teaching section. So it basically goes over what you just read. It helps you understand a lot more. It also has a QR code right here that you can scan and get um, some videos. But it's super good. This was my first Bible and honestly it helped me so much because I was the type to, like I would try to read the Bible. I never understood it. It just never clicked in my brain. But these little sections here that um, explain what you just read, those helped me so much. Honestly, it helped me so much. Um, my current Bible, the Beautiful Word Bible, this I love it just because like it's just colorful and it's my vibe. So this is the Beautiful Word Bible. And as you can see, it has illustrations and it also has like a note section. So super cute. The only thing I don't like is that some like sometimes it takes up like the whole note section. But I don't really use the note section to be honest. I just um, have like a separate journal. So I'm fine with that. And this one doesn't have like it has footnotes sometimes. It has footnotes but... They're not super informative. And that's why I use Enduring Word. So the apps I would recommend when becoming a Christian and learning more about the Bible and Jesus, everything like that. I have three apps that I would recommend. One, of course, is the Holy Bible app. That one is so good. It gives you like a verse of the day. It gives you a prayer of the day. It gives you devotionals. It um, has the Bible, of course, and there are versions where it reads to you 
which that was a game changer for me because there are some books like in the Old Testament I just can't read by myself. I need like somebody to read it for me. The Old Testament I need it read to me because like some of the words or names just don't click and I'm like Ugh, I don't understand. Make sure y'all download that. Um, the second app is Enduring Word. So the website Enduring Word has an app and it's the same thing. You just go ahead and click your book and you know just follow along. It explains what you just read. The last app I would recommend is The Bible Project. So The Bible Project is an amazing app. It helps you understand the books of the Bible. So it gives you a video and this is also on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube. I believe they have a website probably. But it gives you a visual as far as what you just read. And it explains everything. I use this mostly on the Old Testament as well. Like the Old Testament is really hard for me to understand for some reason. But I always use my resources um, to better understand it so I don't give up. And yeah, it just creates like cute illustration and basically a big old summary of what you just read. It also has the Bible on here as well. And you can click around and it'll show you what that means. But it has videos, podcasts, a bunch of classes, it has study guides, um, a bunch of different things. So I definitely recommend, especially in the Old Testament, like the New Testament is pretty easy to comprehend. Um, but the Old Testament is where it kind of gets like tricky and like, you know, the words just jumble and I just, I need to use all my resources. Those are the three apps that I have and would definitely recommend. And what you need to read the Bible or study the Bible definitely highlighters. So I have a bunch of highlighters. So I use the midliners. Um, these are my favorite. And then for pens, I use the Micron, I believe that's how you say it. Um, and then of course, you know, just simple mechanical pencil. But I have a bunch, a bunch of, oops, I have a bunch of pens, pencils, highlighters. So this is my go-to little pout. Another thing you'll definitely need is a journal. So a journal, this one, it was probably like $2 at Target. I got it in one of my vlogs. Um, it's little, it's not like huge. Um, like here's a page on mine. Um, this is for my Bible study, it's Romans. So this is a bunch of just little notes I've taken and honestly it helps to go back. And then of course you'll need your Bible. Um, any Bible will do. I know a lot of people like the King James Version, but honestly that one didn't click for me. I like the new, like the new international version, the NLT, Christian Standard Version. I like those, honestly. And then you can also go digital. So on Etsy, I'll post like a little screenshot right here. On Etsy, I actually got a digital Bible. This Bible is the first one I purchased. It was about $40. It was kind of pricey, but it was worth it because now I use it for my Bible study. Another tip, it would be listening to sermons. Um, my top two favorite people to listen to is Sarah Jakes Roberts and then Stephanie Ike. I think that's how you say her last name. Um, those are my two favorites. I tried to listen to different, you know, guys. I really just shopped around going to different sermons, but these two were the ones who just clicked for me, especially Sarah Jakes Roberts. I watch her every morning. She's just, she just knows how to speak to people, like especially me. Like as I was like a non-believer, you know, she did it for me. She just speaks so well. So definitely find like your preacher, your sermon, your church, whatever. I tried different things. So I tried a podcast. I listened to the Bible in a Year podcast by Mike, Mike Schmitz, I think. Um, I tried that, didn't really click. Um, I tried a couple other podcasts, but they weren't great. Then that's when I started reading the Bible. I started Genesis, didn't click. So I was like, I don't think this is for me until I watched The Chosen. The Chosen is a show that basically it, it tells you a bunch of stories in the Bible and it helps you visualize it. That's what helped me. I'm, I guess I'm a visual learner so watching it helped me so much and I know it's like a hit or miss for some people. Some people don't like it but it's pretty accurate with the Bible and then I watched all three seasons and then I decided to go all in into the Bible. So the way I read my Bible, I choose a book. If you have never read the Bible, if you don't know where to start, a good place to start is John. That is one of the best places to start just because it tells you the story of Jesus. Any of the Gospels, Luke, Mark, Matthew, and John, any of those four 
Those are really good. My personal favorite is Luke, but John is the one that I recommend the most. Second favorite is going to be Romans. Romans is really straightforward. Like it doesn't sugarcoat anything. Romans just teaches you how to live a Christian life in this world. It says a lot of things and how to face certain things that are honestly happening today. Two other books that are really good is Proverbs and Psalms. Those, honestly, like you could read one one chapter, one like little paragraph a day of either of those books and honestly they're like good motivation. They're filled with a lot of wisdom. Honestly, they're so good. Personally, I wish I would just read like a section or paragraph or chapter a day instead of like reading it as a book, you know. Now that's another thing, don't read your Bible as a book. Like really study it because you'll miss so much information by just reading it as a book. If you study it, you know, watch sermons or go to like a Bible study, those will help you so much understand exactly what God is trying to tell you. Um, the last book I want to recommend is Ecclesiastes. That one is my third favorite and I always recommend it just because it helped me a lot. So if you're the type of person to like your mind is always thinking about work, thinking about things that don't matter, like worldly things that don't matter, you should definitely read this book. I read this book in one night. Like I was, I could not put it down. This one was honestly mind blowing and it helped me for sure with my with my walk with Christ. Now another thing about reading your Bible is romanticize it. You, you really need to romanticize reading the Bible. Just like how a date is romantic, you know, setting a candle, that is something that you need to do when you read the Bible, when you spend time with God, romanticize it. Um, that was another thing that helped me a lot is romanticizing, creating a, a cute, fun, cozy environment when you spend time with God. And it's something I look forward to every day. I read my Bible every single day. Personally, I read it first thing in the morning. I don't go on my phone and it doesn't have to be, like you don't have to read a whole book. You can read like maybe just like a little section, a little paragraph, a chapter. I personally always just read a chapter and then I read my Bible at night. I put my phone on D&D and then I Go ahead and read my bible once again it's a chapter but you don't have to read that much you can read just like a little section a little paragraph a little piece of scripture just as long as you're reading as long as you're spending time with god that's all he wants there's different methods to study the bible um there's the soap method and i'll put it right here on the screen um i personally don't use any of these methods actually i honestly just read highlight what stands out to me or what I want to learn more about. I highlight those and then I go on Enduring Word or my study bible or any other resource and I take some notes on what I read. I know a lot of people like the soap method and all these other methods but they just never clicked with me for some reason. I don't know. And then last but not least make sure y'all pray before and after y'all read the bible. Um, that was one thing that I didn't do until just recently and it honestly changed everything. You know, ask him for wisdom, ask him for help understanding his word, um, ask him to give you messages, um, ask him to help you with certain situations. I have a bunch of different bookmarks, probably in about five different books, um, but sometimes I just... You know, I'm praying and then I ask him to just give me a message. Help me understand or help me hear your message. And then I just open my Bible to a random book and then I just go ahead and read it. So this is what it landed on. Honestly, it's a mess. It looks like a mess, but it's an organized mess, I promise. And most of the time, it's his message. It's what's pertaining to my life at that moment. And it helps me a lot. So definitely pray and then after, you know, pray, you know, give him thanks for his word. But yeah, that's it for now. I hope this helps somebody. If y'all have any questions, just please ask in the comments. I'm honestly an open book. And if y'all need help or, you know, anything like that, I'm, I would love to help.